I'm somebody who's pretty dedicated to what I do. Um, I've been doing this all my life. Um, it's definitely, I mean, it, you know, this is cliche, but it's definitely a passion for me. I've sacrificed a lot through my life, you know, to, to get to where I am today. And I don't believe that, you know, you get to where I'm at or doing what I'm doing right now without sacrifice. Um, I'm a loving husband. I have, I have a soulmate who uh, I wouldn't be here without. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's what I do. It's what I do for a living. I mean, it's it's not all uh, exciting all the time, you know. I mean, everybody. It's very glamorous to people on the outside, but it's not. You know, it's very hard work. I'm originally from Tampa, Florida. Um, I'm a fifth generation Floridian. Um, my dad's side of the family, which is the Salgado side of the family, they're all Cuban and Spanish. Um, my great grandmother was my great great grandmother was born in Key West, so. I mean, I am a Floridian through and through. Um, the Salgado side comes from uh, Oviedo and Galicia. Um, they were all cigar makers, even the ones from Cuba. They, they all rolled cigars, that's what we did. Um, I grew up in, uh, I didn't grow up in Tampa, I grew up in South Florida. That were my impressionable years. Um, kind of bounced around. I worked at a lot of restaurants in South Florida, went to culinary school down there. Did all my apprenticeships down there. Worked for, with some. Was fortunate to work with some very good people, um, and landed via California and Seattle. I landed in Atlanta, where I had family as well. My mom's side of the family was all in Atlanta. That's where I met my wife. Um, I was working at a place called Horseradish Grill, and I was working with a. The, I would say the Southern guru of Southern cooking, which uh, Miss Edna Lewis. And I got to work with her and her protege, Scott Peacock, who was the, he was the chef for two, floor, uh, two Georgia governors. And I guess that's kind of where, I, there was a turning point where I was like, okay, this is what I do. Like, it's time to kind of get serious. And it kind of coincided with her calling me a natural. One day, she said to Scott, she said, Chef, you need to hold on to this one because he's a natural. And that kind of just really was like, just hit home. And I got, and, and it was, I was very fortunate to be able to work with her. Um, you know, she knew James Beard. She, she was part of that New York food scene um, that was very, you know, the, 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 the Julia Childs and the Richard Oldneys and, the, that group that changed American cooking, she was part of that. So to be able to work with her and to have that back, and to, to have that in my back pocket uh, was, is pretty awesome. So, you know, uh, we were in Atlanta. We, I, I, I worked at as many restaurants as I could work at. We had a, some sort of a plan because when you're, when you're in this business, everybody's like, oh, you need to open your own restaurant. You need to open your own, res your own restaurant. So we had a, somewhat of a concept, like a Cuban concept, which was Spanish River Grill. Um, we ended up visiting a friend in New Smyrna Beach. And anytime we, any, we went anywhere, Michelle always grabbed one of the real estate magazines and she's looking through the real estate magazine and she finds a restaurant for sale. And we went to the restaurant, it was a little diner, it was a dive, it was pretty horrible. And she's like, we could do this, we could do this, we could do that, and blah, blah, blah. And you really like this, you know, we really like, you know, I, we really wanted to be back in Florida. And uh, so I was just, I, I told her she's crazy. I said, you're out of your mind. And on the way home back to Atlanta, I had pro procured the money to open the restaurant. And that was October night, it was uh, October, it was Columbus Day weekend. By October 19th, I had closed on the restaurant. By uh, December 19th, we were open in 1999. So <laughs> that, we opened this little re Cuban restaurant. Everything was supposed to come with rice and beans. I was supposed to cook in shorts, and I was going to surf every day and then come and cook. And we put tablecloths on the tables because none of the tables matched. And then all of a sudden, we were fine dining in New Smyrna. 
And so we kind of, that, that just kind of transformed and then we just kind of kept tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it. And then my cooking got really kind of, I was kind of coming into my own and, and I was really kind of getting really creative and things were happening for me and it was easy. And one thing led to another, we expanded in 08. Um, a couple years later, I got nominated for the James Beard. And then a couple years later, again, I got nominated for the James Beard. And then I poo-pooed Orlando for a long time. I was like, no, 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 we can't do, you know, we, it's too far away. And then it just kind of dawned on us because we were looking at other places like, you know, Aspen and California. And then I'm like, you know, Orlando is like right here. And so we just started looking around, met, met the owner here. And one thing led to another and we opened up Joko's Bass Kitchen, um, went to the Bass Country and just absolutely fell in love and became, I was more inspired than I was before. Um, it is one of, it's a fantastic place. If you've never been there, uh, it is, it's, it's got everything. And food is the center of the universe for them. So I fell in love with what Chocos means, which is kind of a secret gastronomic society. Started doing a lot of research on the Basque people and, and their culture and their history is, their history is amazing. And then went there and it all came, you know, it all came true and it was just like a beautiful thing. So the Boscos that come in here, because there's a big Basque population because of the high lie, they say that I'm 50% Basque. <laughs> so I got, you know, that's kind of amazing. So, uh, that's kind of it. That's brings you kind of full circle to like where we're at now. When you're learning and you're first coming, you coming into your own, you know, of course you think it's glamorous and it's art, you know, everybody's an artist. And honestly, I mean, this is a more of a craft. I consider myself more of a scientist. Um, I try to teach, you know, the young people that work for, for us, I, I try to teach them that, that this is a science that you, there's so many chemical reactions that are happening when you're cooking a steak or you're, when you're baking, baking something or whatever. You're a scientist because you're transforming food. You're, you're taking a raw product, cooking it, and, and transforming it into something else. So think like a scientist, and then the art and everything kind of will kind of come on its own. Um, so I definitely, think, I, I definitely think it's more of a science than it is an art. As for the management part of it, um, you're either a leader or you're not. Um, you can either inspire people or you can just use them up. I like, I don't have a lot of turnover at, at Spanish River. We don't have a lot of turnover. I have people that have been with me like 10 years. So I try to inspire them. I try to make them, I try to, to teach them to be proud of what they're doing. And I want to, you know, we want, Michelle and I both want to have a place that, that, you, that people take a sense of ownership and they they you know you and you uh, motivate them and that's kind of where so from a management standpoint um, that's kind of what we try to do being a manager and managing managing Millennials it, this new generation is a little bit different <laughs> um, you do a lot of counseling and you, you you have to talk to them in a different way I mean I had shoes thrown at me I had knives thrown at me I had um, you know, food thrown at me, you know, people, I mean, I got abused and that's what you did. I mean, that, you know, that was a long time ago. So you can't do that, t you know, today. I mean, you can, you pick the ones that you can be hard on. Um, but a lot of these kids have never been yelled at or they've never been talked crosswise to, you know, so they get, they're very sensitive. So it's, it's delicate. It's a delicate process these days. There's a lot of advice, you know, pick up tennis maybe or golf no uh, be ready to sacrifice it's the only it's the only way it's the only way to you know hard work pays off nothing is for free hard work pays off do your homework read as many books as you can get as many publications as you can pay attention and sacrifice 
because you're going to have to sacrifice weekends. You're going to have to sacrifice a lot of your personal life to to be successful in in cooking because that's what it takes. It's not easy. When you come to Choco's Best Kitchen, you 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 can expect the closest thing to the Basque Country or Spain without being there. Um, we're all about the journey of how to, when we transform a steak from, from raw product to the cooked product, we're about the technique and the journey, we're about the flavor. So we strive to be the most consistent, um, innovative, we change our menu. We, we change our menu probably sometimes on a daily basis. Um, we have a 3,500 square foot garden out front that's, that's planted for us. Um, so we get first dibs on that. I deal with a lot of fresh product, a lot of um, local fresh product, a lot of local farmers. Um, so sh you should expect, you know, some cold gin tonics and some, you know, delicious, some delicious food.